huge supremacy battle between two confraternities, Aye and Aye, has claimed dozens of lives in Shagamu town over state, including students of secondary schools. This has created fear in the community, and according to the false public relations officer, Olumuyo Adipjobi, Shagamu, almost every young person is the cultist, including students, Okada riders, and other artisans. He further says the cult members who operate in Shagamu include those from neighboring towns, including Ijebuode, Hagowe, and indeed as far as Edo State. Police investigation has led to the arrest of seven suspected cultists and after that recovered a firearm, three life cartridges, and a criminal charm. That's criminal charm. Then we'll talk about that also on the show today. So why are the what are the pull forces factors into cultism? Why is it eating so deep into the society? What are the telltales that your child or what belongs to these people? Because what they refer to is, where do you belong? So I belong. How can we put an end to this menace? So this is what we're taking a look at this morning on Focus on News Hub. Let me let you know that sometime on the show, I do hope to have my colleague, uh, that's Ben Wakama, join us one way or the other. And we're looking forward to that. The numbers should be on your screen at this point in time. So let's talk about why the children, the wards. You look at the entertainment industry and what we hear. I watched a video on TikTok on Thursday. And a young man was narrating his ordeal as an artist uh, with a big time producer that many people love and young, I mean appreciate. Uh, I went to read through the comment section. I wonder, do you also do that? Because I do that. I will see something interesting. I quickly go to the comment section to really read through what people are thinking in that regard. So um, the guy was able to give as much information as possible to really tell the people who he was referring to. So in the entertainment industry, is, must you belong to really belong? So that's a big question this morning. What are those pull factors that really um, entice young people to want to belong. When they belong, what are the benefits? Quote and unquote here. Who are those really behind all these, these uh, groups? I was like, this is syndicate. Groups, so to speak, uh, that really are changing the narratives within our society. Call us, join us in the conversation. We also uh, um, hope to be joined by another person who, uh, really a stakeholder that should be able to, talking to, us, uh, to talk to us on the show today. Do you know what your child is doing in school or your ward? How much uh, do you pay attention to your child or your ward? What are those telltales? How do you tell when a child is really exhibiting some um, traits of, okay, something is changing. Maybe, could it be a color that the child really loves to wear? Could it be the change in attitude? Could it be change in the friends that such a child keeps? So we want to hear from you what you feel the full factors could be, what parents can do, what the general society can do. I'm referring to schools, churches, and the government as well. What can the children themselves do? Because one of the things that the guy said in the video was that, look, um, I don't want to belong, but I am hugely talented. And this man says, um, I want to sign you, but you have to belong. So, uh, so how can people really push through life without really belonging to where they don't want to belong? Elder uh, Adejabi, did I get that correctly? All right, Adebanjo, all right, joins us from Kaduna. Good morning, Elder. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for joining us on the show. All the young people, most of them, just want to belong. And we're just wondering, we, we need to find out the full factors. Uh, elder, yeah, you're in the house. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, the, the problem is a collective thing. I think we have all feel as a people that the community life that we used to experience where we were growing up has completely broken down. So the children want to have their way at the expense of the parents just being, kept, uh, you know, being, being quiet. And we were not taught that way when we were growing up belong to what you know the society these yeah. days don't celebrate you know hard work 
but just make it anyhow mm. and you'll be celebrated. It is very, very unfortunate. And this is what is staring us in the face. Now, when you belong to whichever cause you belong to, this is the fact that you are endowed by that grace to do what you know how to do best. And beneath these cause, there are undertones that you are not aware of that mm. has a consequence that will later affect your life. But yet, most of these things are even in the public care, but the authorities are not doing anything about it. Parents, let's stand up to our responsibility so that God will not hold us accountable. Good morning. Elder, before you go, um, the, the lines are open. You can also join us in the conversation. Is it more about the fact that it's, it's no news that some parents actually belong, right? Is it about the family that the young people come from or the society that they are born into or their quest to know more about life? Oh, I think Elder is gone, so let's keep the conversation going. The numbers are there on the screen. We're so curious. In this part of the world, the African tradition, uh, where I come from, the Yoruba tribe, you would know that uh, traditionally we're very solid you go to any part of the, of the world, you want to see that people have their culture and tradition. Uh, maybe now that we have Christianity, we have Islam, we have other religions that may want to put such associations in bad light, some would say. Maybe that's how some have gotten it wrong. And what kind of associations did our fathers belong to? What kind of associations do they, do they today belong to? In what ways have these kind of relationships or, uh, let me say, yes, associations, so to speak, um, affected the people, the younger generation, are the older ones setting the right example? How do we get to the point that a primary school pupil belongs? Primary school pupil in your neighborhood belongs. I remember some, I think about two years ago in this Lagos state, uh, that we had uh, some pupils or some students some students in some school around the island went to a rampage. And, and we heard that these guys, some of them would even brandish um, the highest level of phones, big phones, like they belong and they are already in touch with older <laughs> members in some higher institutions. And we seem to be sitting on a keg of gunpowder because we seem to be possibly living in self denial or turning you know the deaf ear and blind eye to what's happening around us or feeling um helpless about the situation because if you find out for instance that your child belongs would you turn him or her in to the police to the authorities these are the big big questions the numbers are there on the screen please turn on the volume on your tv set so that we can have the conversation and uh, you can really enjoy this one we are taking a look at what's been happening around town where Oh, news around is saying that the rate at which cultism is growing across the Federation is becoming alarming. If you go to the southeastern part of the country, you know it's a, it's a big deal. You go to the south southern part of the country, it's a big deal. Perhaps in Nigeria, some would argue, uh, I belong to, uh, not belong in that way, it's a, a particular group where uh, this discussion really went crazy. Like, we had about 5,000 responses. I've never seen anything as hot as that before, where you would say that, okay, uh, when you go to a place and you, you want to get busy, life is so challenging, now you want to earn extra, and so you're very busy at work, busy at your business, doing things and all of that, and your child is put in the care of someone who may not be able to really know what's going on. And so by the time you return home, the child is asleep, and then when you, I'm talking about pupils, I'm not talking about just uh, students in secondary school, even to the level of uh, primary school, secondary school, uh, your vulcanizer, you may never know belongs, <laughs> your car rider may belong, <laughs> your downfall driver may belong, the person you send it across the road may belong. So uh, in what ways has this really, uh, really uh, been putting some pressure on the social fabric of the country? We seek to really hear from you on the show today. Please turn down the volume on your TV so we can hear you because it's coming back at us and we can't bring you on the show that way. Same with uh, to us also experiences you had maybe in school 
with cultists and what are those things, in what ways can we help our children stay away from joining these uh, uh, kind of cults, so to speak. So we'd like to hear from you how things would go uh, from now henceforth. Most times we also had instances where some of these uh, members of the cult were apprehended and sometimes even paraded, but that was about all that we heard about uh, such issues. Something would just go down you get absolutely nothing about what happened. Shagun from Lagos, we thank you for joining us on the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Shagun. Yeah, talking about the coffee surrounding us. Can you turn down the volume on your TV, please, so we can hear you? So, I think it's a society that is causing most of the uh, major impact of our countries in this in this country because the uh, people that are even into the courtes act they bring the younger ones to you know, to initiate them and they force them into it hello we can hear you Shagun. yeah they force them into so i just think our parents parents to all right, can you turn down the volume on your TV when you call us so we really can really uh, learn from what you have to say this morning? What can the government do? What happens when these young people are apprehended, um, possibly because they must have caused harm up to death? Imagine in Shadama we hear that 20 people had died. And some of the locals told us that the number uh, is even higher than that. So we're talking about lives. We're not talking about chickens. We're not talking about flies. We're talking about human lives being wasted because of some level of associations. What are the pull factors? We need to really understand when we go out town to really check why people would want to. Uh, I was also uh, checking through a video on TikTok where a guy said that guys who actually want to belong, they'll do anything to convince any, any group, any cult, that they are capable, they fit, they're up to the standard of belonging to them. And so... It is more about the pull factors. What are those things that they get from? Because maybe there's more to it that meets the eye that we all can see to be very evil. But what can be described as always evil is when you join us an association that will cost people's lives. Uwa Diego from Abuja, we thank you for joining us in this conversation. Good morning to you. Good morning, madam. Yes, my contribution to this uh, um, discussion this morning is um, that after the civil war in Nigeria, the type of uh, government that's from military to politicians are men in a secret call. Uh, men in a uh, secret cause who never cared about education, who never helped in the issue of our schools. And then the teachers were struggling to see how they can turn the thing that is happening around them. And uh, because there is no government agencies helping, these people took upper hand subdue the teachers, subdue the law enforcement agents. And uh, that is why we are where we are. Not that the politicians or the people in the government don't know what is happening. But because they themselves are involved. So they are, if you are in a secret court and you are charged in a secret court, it all means you have baptized the child. Hmm. So... Because they are involved, they are helping them, they are recruiting their resources from those uh, courses, in some of them that are ritually. Where do they get their material? They use them to get their material. So that is why the problem, problem is there. If by tomorrow, if our government's uh, politicians wake up to this problem, you see it will be over. It will be helped. People are afraid. That's why most people are taking their students, their kids to private schools where they think they can get uh, help. Eh? Nobody, no parents will be happy to see their child going to court. Hmm. 
When you are trained, you want to leave your house. You pray for the child. You are not introducing the child. This is not a courtesy. To help us. All right. Thank you very much for your perspective. My colleague, Ben Wakama, joins us from Port Harcourt this morning. Uh, ben, it's always very overwhelming when you hear re uh, reports such as some people's uh, children have been killed because they belong to a cult, because they were involved in some, uh, you know, cult activities. I don't know. I know that in Port Harcourt also it's been an issue that we've reported over time. Very well, very well. Uh, let's get to the history of the confraternities. This is not all courtism. This is not secret court. This is confraternity. I remember back in the old days, these confraternities, they want to stay in the government when they have someone in the government. So when they want to stay in the government, they go to the secondary, they go to the universities. They employ the services of the first class students and the students that their parents are influential. What was their reason for them to continue to stay in government, for them to have the people that have that substance in order for them to continue to stay in the government? And then it came to a particular time, some people can't meet up with that standard again, so they went to the streets to pick up some people to fight against that structure in order for them to be in a particular business, to rule, to be the cartel that rules in a particular business or in a particular government. And then here in Nigeria, it changed. What we took was not a vast the way we took it from them. And then when we came in, it was, you have to be, belong. Now, let me tell you one of the things that will make some of these children want to belong. These people are celebrated in the society. These people, because of their qualities, they have opportunities to go into bunkering. They have opportunities to distribute drugs. They have opportunities to go into kidnappings and armed robbery. And so they live an influential and an influential life the executive cars we are the bling blings and they have people following them around all the time and they now serve as a role model to some of these young people in the society then when you ask some of them what do you want to be in the future they say i want to be senior man what is a senior man one of your guys in one of the courts that's exactly what it is and so that's how they crept into it and so that's how they bought the minds of other people and then because they're influential nobody touches them Nobody talks to them anyhow. And then, if you want to settle a case within you and your neighbor, or you and your brother, and even you and your husband, if you report to them, they've beaten husbands in presence of their wives, beaten brothers in presence of their brothers. They became that influential. And so because you want to have supremacy over your neighbor, supremacy over your friend, you want to be seen as influential. And so you go to join the court. That's exactly one of the little things that took them inside. And I know how he came from the street, from the school, down to the streets. In Sangana Street in Port Harcourt, that's where some of the things started. A particular kingpin in the courthood gathered young boys to use them as intels and messengers. And that was how it grew from there. And then for them to be influential, there is a particular social group then called Agaba. It's a social group where big boys, and I mean influential boys in the society are. So in order for them to get that influence, they joined that Agaba and adulterated the original reason of that Agaba. And so the proliferation of cult is everywhere, from the primary school to the secondary school. In yeah. fact, their terminologies are seen as a norm right now. It adopted some things that you cannot allow be, that be allowed to use. If they've adopted yellow, you can't wear yellow. If they've adopted red, you can't wear red. If you do that, you are in trouble. trouble. That's exactly what it is. And then they meet them. They use the opportunity to do drugs, like I said, to do bunkering, to mm. use the opportunity to do armed robbery in order to get money. Do you know that even people with disabilities are among blind, cripples are cultists? You're talking about uh, like taxi drivers. You're talking about KK drivers. I'm talking about I'm telling less you. privileged and disabled. I'm cultists. telling you. Then it's becoming... I'm talking about here in Port Harcourt. Right people. I can imagine. Let, people let on wheelchair. Can you imagine? I'm people on wheelchair. Then let's hear from Dave. It's, it's not even on wheelchair. If you can hear you know me... You know these wheels. If you can hear me, Dave. These Boris wheels that are... If you can hear me, let's be with Gift, who joins us from Abuja. Good morning, Gift. Thanks for being part of the show. From Delta State, Gift. Hello, Gift. All right, uh, please, Gift, we apologize. Please load your phone. 
It's not that you can be part of the show. This is not where you call and you don't have enough credit because we want to really hear you talk to us on the show. Keep the calls coming. The numbers are there on the screen. Just one more. Uh, ben, I'd like for you to round off um, uh, on that part. Round up with that particular statement you have, maybe just in 30 seconds, so we can really bring the newspapers uh, across to our people. Okay, then, because parenting has failed, now because the society, the values, the ethics, and the morals have failed, and then because the security agencies have failed, because the government at all levels have failed, nobody, some of them, their parents are too influential, that when they have been arrested, what happens? They go and always build them. I saw one of them being caught. He was bragging. My father is a brigadier general. He will come to release me. That's what happens. Maybe, maybe. A child is a child of the society before now. When a child goes wrong, any other parent has got the right to discipline that child. And if that child comes home, the mother will say, oh, is that what you did? The mother talks the beating. The mother talks the discipline. But no, it's okay. no longer there. It's no longer anybody's business. Uh, People have been shaded. People have been taken care of whenever they do evil. And evil has been celebrated. Right, That's ben. exactly what it is right now. Thank you so much, Ben. Well, uh, the issue with regards to cultism is something we want to take seriously not only as an organization, but that we should take seriously as a nation. If our children, our wards, our young people go into uh, evil associations so they will get to the top, then what do we have in future? I mean, nearest future and future, future. That's what we're trying to take a look at today.